the word of God. They show up at churches. They say they want to talk. They say, Joshua read all the words of the law, the blessings and the curses, just as that it was written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses had commanded that Joshua did not read to the whole assembly of Israel, including the women and children and the Foreigners. See, they say foreigners can't be saved, but they don't know the Bible. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kwadash, and double honors to the other apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Honest, honest to you, brethren, uh, and you fellow believers of the faith, and shalom to the elect. So anyway, I want to go into the second edition of this video. I, I continue to watch a little bit of rest of it. And uh, what I've seen is a, a complete ball of confusion. Uh, it looked like Elder Mike has lost control. <laughs> uh, then... Um, what happened to IUIC is the same thing IUIC did to us. Uh, they bear false witness on IUIC and said they were trying to fight or looking to fight, and that wasn't the case. So I don't know where Elder Mike got that from. But it's weird. Um, these guys got up, got on a bus. I guess they thought about it the day, couple of days before that they were going to blitz um, IUIC and then said he can get a couple of more views to sit up on a panel with Vocab Malone. And I, I believe this is all view and money oriented when you really get into it. People love drama, and the, the more the drama raises, it's like a pay-per-view event, and you know, people are looking for it. And you can see the comments. You know, you can see Elder Mike, the Christian urban apolog apologist, their comments saying they can't handle the truth. 
Now the IUIC, I'm sure in their comment board, they, you know, they're calling them pork chop Christians. And at the end of the day, each person goes their own way and they still believe in the same damn thing. So where did it get you? And this particular IUIC group with that brother that heads it, he's like on some five-hour energy or something. <laughs> I don't know, you know. I don't know what these characters do. Elder Mike, all of a sudden, he's always seemed to have a bald head. or well, Maybe times he didn't. And now he's got a you know, stack on top of his head. So I don't. I don't know what's up with these Christians and vocab and who trying to, you know, he was trying to exploit one of the bigger brothers from IUIC when clearly these, you know, they got some big jakes in that Christian apologist. And I don't know when they finish, are they going to go uh, back to the church and get some pork chops and chitlins and greens and chicken, you know, I don't know. But that's what they do. They they claim to be apologists. They go out or they, they teach their garbage to our people and then they sit up and eat all abominable foods. And then they happen to have a woman, a woman out there with them and they're holding signs and pushing it in people's faces. Now where is this going to go? All this is is entertainment purposes. But for the edification of this video, I'm going to go into something he brought out in Joshua. Just to let everyone know, sometimes, a lot of times, strangers can be heathen, but sometimes it is an Israelite. And let's say some kind, sometimes you might look at it, it still doesn't mean that the uh, the um, uh, the foreigners are going to have the covenant and the giving of the law. But let's go into it. John 8 and 34. I'll try to read through this. 8 and 30? They say 34. And afterwards, he read the word of the law of the blessings. Now, when you go up, you got to read the whole thing. Um, when it says, and all, Israel, um, and all Israel and the elders and officers and the judges stood on the side of the ark and on the side before the priests and the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, as well, right, as well the stranger as he that was born among them. Listen to what that said. Uh, it says half of them over against Mount Gerizim, okay, and half of them over against Mount Ebel, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, uh, had commanded before that they should bless the people of Israel. And afterward, he read all the words to the law, the blessings and cursings, according to that which is written in the book of the law, right? All that was written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded, which Joshua read not before all the congregation of Israel, right? With the women and the little ones and the strangers. You see how it was separated. <clears throat> that the covenant that uh, that were covenant that were conversant among them. Right? I mean, even when you fast forward to the New Testament, it'll say Jew and Gentile, Jew and heathen, right? You had um, you would have in situations where Israelites um, was it was dwelling in different parts, different parts of the lands. I don't know why they don't get this, but let's go into um, let's go into the um, this word stranger, which goes back to sojourner, and you know we're going to look at all the precepts. We'll get one here in Leviticus twenty five, going into the year of the jubilee. Um, I'm just going to try to read this. It says, And ye shall hallow the fifteenth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto the inhabitants thereof. It shall be as a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. A jubile, uh, jub, jub, jubile shall thou that fifth uh shall that fifteen year be unto you ye shall not sow neither reap which groweth of itself nor gather grapes in the vine undressed um let me go on down to the point it says the land shall not be sold forever for the land is mine right for ye are strangers 
and to joiners with me. Right? And in all the land of your possession, ye shall grant redemption to the land. Um, it goes on to uh, say, let me go back. Let me go back. Uh, I'm just reading the precepts out of this. Let's go to Leviticus 19.34. But when you read on this, I'm just reading some of this. It's called Brown, Driver, and Briggs. Um, Strong's. Oh, well, let me see there. Concordance or whatever. It says, to join a temporary dweller, newcomer, <clears throat> um, a home opposed to homeborn of Abraham Hebron. It says, Moses in the desert, Exodus 2 and 22. Explanation of Gershom, Moses' son. Now, when you look up the word Gershom, it actually means stranger. As claiming hospitality, right? Perhaps uh, in above cases, certainly in general, with technical sense, Figuratively of it says Yahweh, Yahweh of Israel in Egypt. Now here's a precept here, Leviticus 19:34. It says, um, 19:34. I'm just trying to get read to the points. Uh, 33. And if a stranger shall join, and that's what stranger mean, with thee in your land, ye shall not vex him. Why is he saying that? But the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you, and thou shalt love him as thyself, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. I'm the Lord your power. Now, why is he saying ye were strangers in the land of Egypt? Right? This is the same thing, same scenario as before I woke up, and we are here in Egypt, Babylon together. And I would have been a stranger, right? I wouldn't have been, and especially in, in certain situations where some should join amongst others, right? You can even look at it if some brothers out of the country that will come into the country and dwell with you, you know? But then we all, you know, a lot of us had different philosophies too, okay? Let's go to, um, in fact, let's go up to the 18th verse. Let's go to the 18th verse. It says, Ye shall keep my statutes. Thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind. Thou shalt not. Uh, no, that's not it. But hey, that's good. I want to get the one. Um, the other one. Of why this is said. It's because 1930. I think it's 30. Uh, it should be 18 right here go um, it, this talks about a lot of what you should be doing according to your brother now why was this being said uh, I think I went down too far it says uh, it says here 17 thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart why are you saying that because Jake would have hatred for his brother. Thou shalt not in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and, thy, and suffer a sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear grudge against the children of thy people. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Right? I am the Lord. And it's clearly it's not talking about other, <coughs> other uh, nations. That's why in the, in the 17 verse it says, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So when you go up here, let's go to Amos 2 and 5. It says, And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under the heaven. That's why they'll pull out that scripture, um, Go therefore and teach all nations. Why? Because the Israelites really make up more than one nation. They are nations of Israel. So, the Christians aren't going to see it. And when they get to that point and you pull it out and you show them that these uh, homeographs, these words, they spell it the same but can be different in meaning. The same thing with the Jew and Gentile. The same thing with there, there, and there, or where, and where, or tie, and tie. You get the point. It starts to become a bit confusing. 
You have to be able to apply it in the proper context. It all boils down to faith and belief. Not all these people, they're not meant to get it. So why would you continue to fight for them to get it? We understand that the Christians, they don't have any knowledge. The only knowledge they have is the belief in the Bible, but they have no knowledge to understand that, you know, they're not, they're, this is all about payback, you know? And I believe it's more about views, more about getting some more attention, getting recognized. This is their way to try to bring Christianity back into the the light of luster. <laughs> but it seems as Christianity has lost its luster. Anyway, that's all I have on that. Shalom.